were turning, uh, sometimes uh, it was done because uh, the quality of rivers got uh, very degraded in the past for the release of sewer systems and therefore people thought uh, to cover the river in order to transform the river into a sewer system. And uh, of course these kind of interventions, river tunnel change uh, both uh, river quality and river and quantity of river <coughs> flow. Quantity is changed because uh, when you cover the river you change the conveyance of the river and therefore the regime of the river flow changes and the quality is degraded for obvious reasons because when you cover a river there is a degradation of quality. Moreover, that is to say that river tunneling is a relevant problem in Italy because uh, it causes an increased flood risk. For obvious reasons, because the conveyance of the river is reduced and therefore when a flood comes, uh, the flood cannot be conveyed downstream by the river and therefore the city that is built over the river is flooded. Freshwater withdrawal is of course an impact and uh, for both surface water and groundwater and land use change. Land use change is indeed a significant human impact and includes uh, agriculture, drainage, uh, afforestation and deforestation. Of course deforestation causes a reduction of interception and usually an increase of operation. It depends on, uh, on the local context but usually this is what we expect. Afforestation causes conversely an increase of interception and uh, a reduction of the temperature over the field and therefore depending on the condition a reduction of evaporation. These are the main impact that we need to consider and uh, as I said we need to assign priorities. Let me say first of all that uh, as I said there is a big discussion in the scientific community on uh, the priorities to assign to these impacts and in particular on climate change. Human induced climate change is a priority or not? This is uh, the subject of, uh, uh, as I said, a very lively discussion in the scientific community. What we need to do is uh, to make an objective assessment. So when we talk about the water resources system and when we talk about sustainability, we need to objectively assess what happened in the past and what are the threats for the future. And therefore we have to try to establish priorities in an objective way. And my suggestion is to make a combination of uh, two different assessments for giving priorities to human impacts. And the first is perceptual assessment and the second is uh, what I call the quantitative assessment. So first of all, we have to get an idea of what's going on. Perceptual assessment. So, do we have concerns, do we have information related to human impact? Let's look at the catchment, let's look at the aquifer, and let's try to understand what happened in the past and uh, what may happen in the future in terms of uh, facts. And then we may look for data. And this is what I call the quantitative assessment. So basically, if we talk about an aquifer, you may look for data. Data on water table depth, hydraulic head depth, in the past, and look if there were changes. I call this quantitative assessment. The alternative is look at the land, look at the wells, 
Are there many wells there? Are there clear indications of land use change that occurred in the past and may occur in the future? So did they change agricultural techniques? Did they change the land use? Did they urbanize the area significantly? Are there plans to urbanize the area in the future? So are there plans from the local administration to change significantly the percentage of impervious areas or not? This is perceptual assessment. By doing this consideration, by assessing what occurred in the past and what is going to occur in the future, you will not be able to say how much the water table level changed or is going to change. This is not a quantitative assessment. But through the perceptual assessment, you may realize whether there is support to the quantitative interpretation that in the past water table decreased. So if you see that there is a decrease in the water table that is indicated by the data, and you see that in the past water withdrawal is increased a lot in the area because a lot of more wells were digged, then you may get an interpretation a quantitative interpretation that is supported by facts, by perceptual assessment, which is essential, again, to reduce uncertainty and to make reliable predictions. So let's talk about perceptual assessment. Let's look at what's going on, at what occurred in the past and what is planned for the future. And let's identify facts that may change, may impact freshwater availability, facts related to human impact. We may also carry out interviews with people. We may listen to people, listen to policymakers, listen to farmers, and get, get their perception of what occurred in the past. And let's talk with, uh, again, with local administrators, policy makers, and let's make a prediction of what may occur in the future. The next step is to put these facts in order of priority. And uh, this is not easy because of, uh, of the fact that, as I said, Science does not yet have a clear understanding of what are priorities for human impacts on water resources. My suggestion, and this is a personal interpretation, is to try to divide, to distinguish between hard facts and soft facts. Try to make a difference between what looks to you impacting and what's not. So, these are my suggestions. You, you will not find in the literature some indication, these indications. Add facts. In my opinion, this classification is again given by my opinion, hard facts are demographic expansion in the past and in the future. There is, this is, in my opinion, an hard fact. It's clear that demographic expansion means more water demands. And in my opinion, demographic expansion is one of the main human impact on water resources. It's the cause of one of the main human impacts on water resources. Sustainable design of a water resource system means to be able to predict demographic expansion. I know that this may look trivial, but it's not. Sustainability 
is mainly related to demographic expansion. River diversion. If you see that a river diversion occurred in the past, this is an artifact. If a river is diverted downstream, you don't have the same water resources availability. Again, this may seem to be trivial. But look, if you consider what is the effect of a river diversion and what is the effect of climate change, there is no doubt that river diversion is potentially more effective. Because it's something physical that occurred and which is given for sure. And then you may have some plans for the future for realizing either power plants, for making river diversions. So this kind of intervention is extremely important. River damming, same thing. Dams change the river flow radically. There are statistics on how much the global river flows were changed by damming, by river damming. It's amazing. It's amazing. For sure, it's more powerful than climate change, more impacting. River training, again, river tunneling, etc. Even river training changed a lot water quality. Groundwater withdrawals, indeed, this is an hard fact. Keep in mind that sometimes we cannot quantify them because uh, wells can be done, can be digged by farmers, by individual people, and even if we have a, a law in place in Italy which says that any well must be subjected to authorization, indeed it's so easy to, to dig a well that, that we have only a few percentage of wells that are monitored. And then Land use change, when it is extended and it's substantial, it is very effective. Think about urbanization. But in order for the land use change to be an art fact, it must be substantial, land use change, not just minimal, and extended. And we don't have the perception that indeed, if we look at the land use change, human induced land use change, it is limited to a small percentage, a very small percentage of the Earth's surface. Even if you look at a highly urbanized area like the Bologna district and including the mountains, what we call the province in Italy, you will see that the amount of urbanized area is no more than 5-6% of the total, which means that our perception is false. When we look around, we would say 70% of the area is urbanized. But if you travel outside the city, you easily realize that indeed the percentage of paved areas is a very small one, a very small number. But when land use change is substantial and uh, Extended, it's indeed a matter of concern. For instance, in the flat region, if you consider only the flat region of the Padana Planning, then this change is deemed to be uh, an essential, an artifact. Finally, local climate change in, in, uh, in, sorry, in climate sensitive areas like the Alps. The Alps, there are some regions in the Alps which are known to be significantly affected by warming. Water resources availability in some regions of the Alps is significantly affected by warming. Another artifact that comes to my mind in the Alps is uh, usage of water for artificial snow production. This has caused a significant impact on the hydrology of the Alps. Okay, I'm stopping here. Again, I will get back to the groundwater equation next week, next Monday. My plan for the next week is Monday lectures and Tuesday, Tuesday we 
I'll ask you to bring the PC, so I'll give, give you the advice one week earlier, okay? And we will uh, work with the IMOB model on Tuesday.